Old School has so many ways to train your skills and print gold pieces, but loads of methods get written off as overly risky, too intense, or they're just not optimal. My goal is to shine a light on underused methods that deserve some love. This is Underrated Methods. Mining. Everyone loves mining. Look at all the happy miners throughout RuneScape. Me too, buddy. The game really lets you know early and often that training this skill will be torture. But fear not, today's underrated method offers some of the best XP, money, and Iron Man supplies with the skill. It's also the fastest way to get the ugliest pet in the game. Efficiency scape aside, it's still the most fun method to do in moderation. Some new methods have taken the mining spotlight, but this one dates back to a release in mid-2007. Stop picking up dirt for Percy, leave the shooting stars, and let's head down to the Shiloh gem mine. Before anything else, let's talk about why you should consider coming here at all. The gem mine offers well over 100k XP an hour and around 1.7 mil GP in useful gems if you're willing to tick manipulate, even with plenty of mistakes. If you decide to mine normally, you're still looking at around 1 million worth of gems and 70k XP. You can bank a significant amount of crafting XP and supplies to make bracelets of slaughter, dodging necklaces, expeditious bracelets, and burning amulets. It is absolutely a higher intensity method than some of the other mining alternatives, but it pays dividends of up to 5 times XP and GP of the more popular methods. Let's quickly cover requirements. You have to have done Shiloh Village, you have to have done the Karamja Hard Diary. This is definitely one of the easiest hard diaries to complete, but isn't something you can do on day one of an account. However, with Project Rebalance that is supposedly coming as soon as May, they will be moving this to the Medium Diary, which is substantially simpler. The only annoying task likely being getting a Gout Tuber and 65 Fishing. Just another reason to get those quests in your diaries done. You also must have a Charge Glory. You technically don't need it, but it triples the success rate of mining at these rocks. The final requirement is wanting to actively play. Tick manipulating or not, this is an active method. There's no real downtime like a lot of other mining activities. It's that real OG mining experience we all first played with. Some optional items worth bringing. Your highest tier pickaxe if you're not manipulating, otherwise bring an adamant pickaxe to tick manipulate. Sparing you the details, it won't hurt your success chance, but it will help you get back into the three tick cycle if you make a mistake. Your Karamja gloves three or four are the best way to get there with the gem mine teleport, a gem bag if you have it to store all the non karabja gems, tick manipulation items if you're three ticking, a celestial ring for a better success chance, a way to restore run energy, full prospector, and graceful or weight reducing clothing in the other slots. That should leave you looking something like this. Now let's show exactly how to do this. I've marked some critical tiles that you can grab in the description, although quickly you won't need them. If you're mining regularly, I recommend sticking around this loop. If you're not three ticking, you have much more freedom since the rocks will respawn by the time you get around to the bank anyways. Just deposit all your gems every time you complete a loop and start back over. That's really it if you're not tick manipulating. How to three tick. I'll keep this short since it isn't meant to be a guide on three ticking and not everyone wants to do it. I will say though, this is definitely one of the more satisfying three tick methods. You don't have to drop things nearly as often, which really chills it out. You get to bank those items and end with a big stack and there's something about completing a lap that feels good. I can make a more in-depth three ticking guide if people would find that useful, but for now, I'll keep it to what you need to know. The easiest way to start the cycle every time is to click on the first rock normally and wait until the pickaxe touches the rock, then use your tick manipulation item and click to move to the next rock on the same tick. Now that we know how to get started, let's break it down tick by tick. Tick 1 will either be when your pickaxe hits that first rock, or when you would receive a resource. On that tick, we're going to do our tick manipulation and click on the next rock. When tick 2 begins, your character will move and do the manipulation action in their hands. On tick 3, they will arrive and look at the rock, and the cycle will repeat. When you're too far from the next rock, wait until you cross the mark tile, then start the manipulation action and click on the next rock. As your inventory fills up, just drop the jades. I recommend using an inventory tag to identify them and setting the left click option to drop. Using plugins like the visual metronome can help make this simpler. This really was meant to just be a cursory overview. If you're looking for a more in-depth guide, I highly recommend JCW's video on three ticking here. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, now that we know what we're doing, let's compare this to some other methods. To give a realistic expectation of these theoretical numbers, in an hour, I managed 115k XP and these supplies. They sold for more than market, and I walked away with over 1.9 mil for an hour of gem mining. If you're not manipulating, I'd expect about 60% of this. 
Shooting stars cap out at about 30k XP, and they make almost nothing, like 100k an hour, but they are the most chill method you can do. Amethyst has the high requirement of 92 mining, but once you get there, you can enjoy maybe up to 25k mining XP an hour and 350k GP. Calcified rocks can get you up to 50k XP an hour and 3,000 blessed bone shards, which would be about 18k prayer XP. Motherload mine before 85 gives you about 37k XP an hour and 130k, and after 85 gives you about 300k an hour and 45k XP. Finally, Granite can tap out at no GP and 125k XP an hour. Gem mining is most comparable to Granite, but it's way easier to execute and you'll find yourself more consistent and with loot. The other methods essentially boil down to whether or not you want to AFK and how much, but if you want to actively play, I think gem mining is the clear winner. Alright, so wrapping up, I think gemstone mining is a diamond in the rough of training methods for a pretty rough skill. New methods that are more AFK have surfaced, but if you're willing to actively mine, gem mining is one of the most profitable skill activities and even activities overall, especially considering the requirements. If you want that totally AFK mining experience, this is definitely not for you, but offer something to mains and irons alike for XP, supplies, and GP, which is quite rare for any skill. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it brought another method for you to try out. I really appreciate all the support and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!